Hello and welcome back to my little print. So I am about to start printing the first layers on a couple of them, but I have to confess that I've gone ahead and printed one completely. And that's because I need to get my head around working with a coloured paper and also because this is slightly different the way that I'm working here from how I have worked before. So I kind of wanted to do that, think about it and then come back and show you how I've done. So this print I did because it was the easiest one of, of the, the four that I'm doing. And um, it's been interesting working with the paper. So this is Stonehenge paper. I got it from Jackson's Art. It's 250 gram paper and it's got a textured uh, side and a completely smooth side. So I am using the completely smooth side. It also has a really nice decal, which I've only been able to keep at the bottom of the print. But um, I've hung on to that because we're thinking about box framing these with the decal exposed. So um, that's the paper. So the other thing I had to think about was the registration with the decal, because with this particular print, when you're going to simulate brush strokes like this and then ink up with several layers, one on top of the other, it's really critical that you get the registration perfect. So in this sky, there are two, three, four, five, six layers because I built the white up in a couple of layers. So there are six layers here and you've got to hold all that tiny detail. So registration, completely critical. So I was really, really careful about that and I'll show you how I did it in a second. And other than that, um, it's been interesting building up the texture. In these fields, I wanted it to look quite frosty, so I've printed wet on wet. Um, normally I say print dry, let your layers dry, but sometimes wet on wet works. And in this instance, it's given me this kind of, um, when there's a frost on the, on the field and it's, everything is kind of slightly milky feel to it. So that's that little print, and you can see what's left here. Um, I've cut everything away. So now I'm going to work on the other prints. So the next two that I'm going to work on, and I'm going to work on these both together, is uh, this stormy one, and then this late afternoon sunsetty print. I have got yet another print here. This is oddly enough, the most complicated print. So I'm leaving that until I really know what I'm doing um, because this is going to be early morning and I have to work out how I'm going to do that. So one of the things um, that's, that's been interesting about working with grey paper is that I haven't been able to rely on transparency and the white of the paper to brighten my colours because normally I would work like a watercolourist and let the white of the paper work for me. So here I'm going to have to lay down some layers in white um, for the snowy area and I also want it to be pale up here so I'm going to put a sheet of white on that one. This one on the other hand I don't because this is a sort of glowy sunset so I'm going to put a pale yellow just a little bit down here um, to start with because I want blue up here. And if I put a sheet of pale yellow over the whole thing, of course, there's the danger of it being greeny up here. So the first layers I'm going to do with these, which I'm going to do in a sec, is blob of pale yellow here and sheet of white on this one. And then we'll go forward into the next layer. So I am now going to start inking up my late afternoon picture. And I'm going to put a band of pale colour across it because I want this, this area to be quite bright and golden and I don't want to spread the yellow all over the plate. So I've got a little bit of yellow and these little wire handled rollers, I have a lot of these. Um, they're really useful for, for a little partial inking. So I'm going to start working them. Now, the land here, is an interesting one because 
it's actually snowy because these are all winter pictures so although it's going to be grey a bit of a glow of yellow under the transparent grey would be good because it'll suggest that light of that sky just catching down so I'm just working across with this under inking most of this, I mean almost all of this is going to be covered so it doesn't have to be perfect perfect and also I'm not quite sure until I print the first one how it's going to interact with the grey so that will be an interesting one to find so, okay so that's now ready for me to test and see how that's working so now I've come over here to the printing press to take an impression. I just wanted before I did that to explain that this painting on the block is done with poster paint and Sumi ink. I told you about that in my previous film. And the ink that I'm using to ink up the yellow is oil-based ink. It's traditional oil-based ink from Cranfield Colours. And because this is water-based and this is oil-based, the um, image will stay on the lino and it won't transfer onto the print while I'm working. It may I may lose a little bit of definition as I clean it with white spirit, but the stuff that's got the black ink in will uh, not wear off as quickly as the white. So I'm going to keep most of my drawing all of the way through the work. So um, that's how that's working. And... The paper here I've stuck on the frame so this is basically exactly the same method as the registration device that we sell in the shop that will hold the registration perfect through the printing. So I'm going to take the time and a ruler to copy the registration lines very carefully across to make sure that everything is bang on accurate so that I can keep layering these very subtle shapes without it looking messy. So there are 15 um, prints in each of these editions that I'm doing and each piece of paper obviously will have to be marked up like this so that I can line it up for the next layer. And it really is worth taking your time using a nice sharp pencil and a ruler for this so that things are accurate. especially with sort of scribbly painty work like this because it's sort of the looser my drawing and inking the tighter I, I need the registration to be otherwise it just looks like I've lost the plot so very important to get that right. Okay, So quite a tight fit. And I'm using card here to pack it and I'm going to use three layers of card, which is going to put a good firm pressure on the lino. I've got five layers and I, I alternate, but three is a sort of good medium pressure for me. Good. That's better than I thought it was going to be. I was a little bit concerned that that yellow wouldn't show as bright enough but I'm very pleased with that so that's great so I'm going to work my way through all 15 now and lay down that yellow colour. So now I'm coming on to work on the stormy print and that's nice and simple because what I need to do is just put a wash of white over the whole thing to get started for the snowy areas here um, but what I might do is double double ink so I might put a sheet of, of white over the whole thing print it and then put down another layer of spot white in the two areas I want to be a denser white because I know from doing that first print with the blue sky that actually you have to build up layers of white for them to be really bright on that grey paper.
so now I've got my block all completely inked up. Again, this is oil-based ink on top of that water-based painting, so uh, no transfer. And again, I'm working at the same pressure, three, three pieces of card, so nice firm pressure. So if you lift it up this way, you can see. So hopefully you can see it's not like flat, complete white which is kind of nice in some places, but not in others. So I am going to leave the piece of paper down and I'm going to spot colour white into the two areas I know that I want to be a more bright, opaque white. So as I'm filming this, we're waiting to hear what the announcement is about lockdown and you know, everything feels very up and down at the moment and the only thing I can think is just to keep carrying on and making art and um, hope that things improve. So a bit of a stressy afternoon, but I'm going to ignore that and focus on getting the colour in the right place. So I've spot colour around where there's a break in the cloud and I also want more white on the snowy part of the ground down here. So I'm just going to put in a little bit more white down here. So like I said, the more painterly and loose and textural these, these prints are, the more important it is that they're crisp and precise. I mean, I always aim for crisp and precise with all of my prints, but it's critical with something like this. Otherwise, it just looks messy. There. And you can see that's given me denser white in those places there. So um, that's the beginning of that print and I'm going to work my way through them before I go to the next one. So thank you for joining me. Um, I've got a bit wiser to YouTube and can I ask you please to like this film if you like it and to subscribe if you can because that really helps with the algorithms and getting these films out there and that in turn helps us to make more films. So thank you and I hope you'll join me for another film about these little prints and how they're getting on.